A former head of the armed forces in the Czech Republic, Petr Pavel, will be the country's next president. With almost all ballots counted in the presidential election, Pavel has won 58% of the vote, defeating the former prime minister and billionaire businessman Andrej Babiš. The new president is a firm supporter of NATO, which he served as a general and of the European Union. Well, the two men have spoken in the last few hours. First, here's Petr Pavel. I would like to thank not only those who voted for me, but those who did not vote for me as well, because they made it clear that they respect democracy and they care about what this country would look like. I see values winning this election, values like truth, dignity, respect and humility. And I am convinced that these values are shared by the vast majority of us and that they are certainly worth the effort. They will be part of our lives and will return to our politics. I congratulate Mr. Peter Pavel on his victory and acknowledge my defeat. I congratulate him on becoming the next president of the Czech Republic. I would like to wish him to be the president of all the citizens of the Czech Republic to perceive their problems and to fight for the interests of the Czech Republic. I would like to thank our voters very much. We have achieved a fantastic result. Nothing ends, because we here, the ANO movement, and I was the candidate of the ANO movement, will always be here for you. Well, we're joined now by the BBC's Rob Cameron, who is at Petr Pavel's uh, campaign headquarters in Prague. Tell us uh, more about the winner. Well, Petr Pavel is a decorated war hero for his service uh, in the war in the former Yugoslavia. He's the former head of the Czech Armed Forces and uh, he's the former head of the uh, NATO Military Committee. So a military man down to his bones, a retired general now. And many people said that surely Czechs would never elect uh, someone who spent so long in uniform um, to be their head of state. But he is also, more importantly, um, a liberal. He's in favour of same-sex marriage. He's firmly uh, supports uh, the Czech Republic's adoption of uh, the euro. So he has these liberal values. And as you played in that clip there, uh, he said that this, was, this election was a victory uh, for truth. Uh, a victory for honour, for dignity. So those are the kind of, uh, kinds of values that uh, he has uh, persuaded the Czechs uh, to vote for this election and um, give a very resounding endorsement, not only to him and those values, but a resounding defeat uh, for Andrei Babiš. Yes, Andrei Babiš, though, has been a dominant force in Czech politics for quite some time. So to have, un have won in this way, quite such a convincing victory is something. How did he do it? Well, I think Andrei Babiš made the significant strategic error right at the beginning um, of this campaign that began two weeks ago when the two men um, made it through uh, in the first round. Uh, and he decided to frame this whole campaign um, through the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, he put up a billboard saying, I'm a diplomat, not a soldier. I'm not going to drag the Czech Republic into war, a clear accusation towards um, Mr. Pavel. And that immediately framed this election against, um, against the war in Ukraine. And that was uh, a, really an own goal, because from that moment on, uh, Mr. Babiš was uh, attacked for his position towards uh, supporting Ukraine, towards Russia. He says that he would organize a peace conference here in Prague and invite uh, Mr. Putin, Mr. Zelensky uh, and uh, Joe Biden to somehow settle this war uh, in, a, in, a, in, the, in, the, in a, this diplomatic setting. And people said that's simply naive. The only way uh, to help Ukraine is for Russia to be roundly defeated on the battlefield. And that's something that Petr Pavel very much endorses. And I think we can see this election uh, that the Czech people stand behind him on that. And they also uh, believe that uh, it is their right uh, and their obligation uh, to support Ukraine in its conflict against Russia. What can we expect then from Petr Pavel? I mean, we know that he is probably more oriented to the, the West than the East, as you said. Well, he certainly has a tough job ahead of him. 58%, it is a remarkably good result. It, as I say, it's a resounding defeat for Andrei Babish. But at the same time, there is a large constituency of people, maybe not those in the big cities, maybe those people who haven't been the winners of the transformation process in this country since the fall of communism in 1989. And he now is, of course, their president too. 
and he has to be the president of everyone in the Czech Republic, including of uh, those people who are very, very suspicious of uh, the government's support, say, of Ukraine's military efforts, or even their own country's membership in organizations like the EU and NATO. So he now has to win those voters, those voters who didn't vote for him, he has to win them over. Rob, for the moment, thank you very much. Rob Cameron reporting now from Prague.